Y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. That's because it's off. <laughs> Is that better? Can you hear me now? I want to make a, uh, a comment to the uh, council. I spent some time with Jay on this, and there's a tendency that these meetings end up running like sometimes three hours, sometimes longer. <clears throat> so what we've done, we've made some changes to the agenda. We'll still cover the same stuff, uh, but instead of having every vendor come up here, <clears throat> excuse me, and do their dog and pony show, uh, Jay and his team will do the presentations and just do a quick recap. Um, we feel like uh, that's Jay and his team's job to do that. And if there's an issue, it's his responsibility to bring it to the council, but it'll cut the time probably in half. <clears throat> so just wanted to let y'all know. All right, next item is public comments on the agenda. Is there any public comments on the agenda for today? Yes, sir. Yes, my name is Paul McDowell. Um, do you want to do your presentation? Yes, it, it is. Uh, I, you're at the, uh, Paul, you're at the, uh, uh, we've talked on the phone. We did. <clears throat> I've got you down under public comments because you're not on the agenda. Right. So I will call you at the appropriate time. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other public comments? Uh, request approval for the April 3, 2018 TDC meeting minutes. Do you have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, motion passes. I abstain. Not the thing. Get that, Lisa. What, what was the reason for the abstention? Abs. I was not here. Not, the last not, not grounds for abstention. Okay. So I approve. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that one, Lisa? <laughs> <clears throat> okay, Jason. Good morning, sir. <clears throat> Good morning, Council. I'll try not to get too heavy into the mic. I'm Jason Kutcher, I'm the Director of Administration. I want to thank you guys for your time today. Um, a little streamline, which you guys will have more details in your book. I've given you the financial reports for both February and March with more details, but I've got a quick snapshot of each one of those for you to present. For February, year to date, on our expense allocations were 42% through the year at that time. Uh, we had spent 22 or less uh, spent in each department. Admin and marketing had the most spend this month. Um, I did find a little um, issue with gasoline. You'll see it on your detail. I put a note out there what it was is with our new fuel system. We had two vehicles added on to admin. Um, and so we've been paying for fuel for them for a little while. So I've corrected it and they're make, making the changes now. But you'll see again, this is kind of a block of that month spend uh, broken out per department. For March, uh, year to date, we're 50% through the year, 41% or less is spent in each department. Uh, marketing is pushing shoulder season at that time. Beach operations, operations are all in, uh, increasing because of the spring visitation. So again, 50% through the year and 41% spent. 
The next section is a recap, and that is your reserve report. You'll find that on the last page of each one of the monthly reports. And uh, this is just a quick snapshot of numbers. I just wanted to highlight a few. And this again is at the uh, end of March's numbers. Year to date, our revenue is at $6,216,231. Our anticipated revenue for the year is 23 million. So at this point, we were 14.47% towards the goal. Uh, with our non-TD uh, revenue, which would be taking out the retail sales and the permit fees, we were at 2322759 uh, for March, as of March reserves for a total, we're at thirty-eight million seven hundred eighty-five dollars, or seven hundred eighty-five thousand eight hundred twenty-six. Jason, yes, sir. We don't have this stuff in our books. It it, it is a um, it should be at the end of the March and February. Uh, you'll see the March. You know, have a big pie graph in front of it. Right is it not in there? It's the same one that I emailed you as well. Yes, and it's the very last page of that report. We'll have the reserves. It just has a lot of numbers, and all I wanted to do is highlight just the main, the meat and potatoes of those numbers. Yes, sir. Um, okay, two or three questions. Sure. I noticed on the uh, visitor center, December, we didn't have numbers on that March. We, we did. I know she's going to um, include the numbers as far as Dawn goes. Dawn will have those updated numbers. Okay. That was just, it, it wasn't propagating from one sheet to the next whenever they made the copies. Because we but, have February, but, March, or April's on there all of also. Well, they'll be on there. Though. They'll be in her report. She'll go through and show them all. But they're all part of the revenue and uh, on total. The, on the uh, beach renourishment, uh, this account there was a question on the uh, percentage of uh, fuel yes um, that well that was on the, sorry that was uh, where we had a couple of vehicles that were in the wrong accounting code they were getting fuel paid for right so I found it and put in the correction so they're making the corrections now so yeah, yeah. but like by March you spent a lot of money oh yeah on absolutely fuel. and that's what happens when you have two beach operations vehicles under admin they do a lot more travel than ours do so yes sir Okay, that's all. That's all okay. my questions. And this is a snapshot of the reserve report. Um, you'll see uh, again, as of March, the total was thirty-eight thousand or thirty-eight million seven hundred eighty-five thousand eight hundred twenty-six. Uh, the next section you'll see, and you should have a TDD collection history in there. Um, on the screen, you'll see sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. You'll have more in your book. Uh, with that in February, we were we uh, TDT revenue collection was 626,264. That was 8.74% above February of last year. <coughs> For March, we had $2,261,800. That was 24.74% above March of last year. Uh, TDT total year to date as of March was $6,216,000. $231. That was 14.12% above last year. Um, again, you, when we've had some conversations about it where wherever Easter falls is where you see that bump as far as visitation goes. So we just got our April numbers in just about a day ago. And we were down a little bit, which kind of correlates with where last year we were up in April, this year we were down in April. So we were at 1785617 That was 10% lower than last year. Um, but what I did was I collectively added last year's March and April and this year's March and April. And so we were actually up by 6.25% collectively. Yeah. So, but when you first see that, of course, you're like, wait a minute. And I'll send out more of those reports in completion now that I've got them. I'll go through and put them together and send them out, email them out to you all. And uh, barring any questions, I'd like to request the approval for the TDC financial reports for February and March of 2018. Uh, motion. I so motion. Second. 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 <clears throat> a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, sir. I think you're next again, aren't you? Yes, sir. I'm sure. And the next agenda item is our FY19 budget draft. And first, I want to thank each and every one of you for meeting with us and spending time with us. It is it's paramount to this process and has really helped us over the last year streamline uh, our budgeting process. And Matt, especially to you, I know we spent a lot of time on this, and I appreciate your extensive help on it. Uh, for the FY19 uh, TDC budget, 
Um, you'll see that the budget's downloadable from the attachment, and also I've included the budget that I have uh, will be turning into finance. And um, the other budget that you had on hand when we got to meet with you has got the detail laid out, and I'll be sending another detailed uh, budget in an email once we take it uh, and turn it into finance for the first meeting. Our goal, of course, is to budget smartly while maximizing our mission of marketing and guest experience. Um, on the slide, you'll see in 2017 our actual earned dollars, and uh, that was $23,527,710 in Ben Tax Collection in 2017. Our actual budget was $26,692,264. Uh, that variance you see is rollovers from capital projects from the two years prior. If we didn't finish something like the 331 bike path project and it was in the in the plans or in the development stage, then that money would be rolled over to the next year to be able to cover that cost. Um, for 2018 predicted revenue, we were at 8.15% last year increase. So this year we modestly kept it a little bit lower at 8%. So if we make 8% above last year, it'll put us at $25,408,924. Our budget ask, which includes the additional staffing that we all discussed, um, would put us at 25338104 which gives us to the good $70,000, almost $71,000. That'll give us a little bit of a cushion just in case we have a little downturn, or uh, it also keeps us operating within our means. Uh, you'll, you'll see on the pie graph, that's kind of how our budget's divided out, where a lion's share of it goes to marketing and beach operations, and then the other portions are divided up with communication sales and administration. The next slide is just a quick overview of our different departments and some really quick highlights of some of the, uh, the, the push and reasons behind any budget variance. Um, administration want to streamline spending and departmental budgets. Marketing want to invest in creative assets to strengthen the brand visitors. Uh, sales want to invest in new technology and software to better serve uh, prospecting new businesses. <coughs> and then with communication, we want to support growth with our PR agency and provide more creative. Um, and with Beach Operation, of course, we want to develop and maintain those top-notch facilities and access and, and look for that elusive harmony on the beach, as Brian Kellenberger would say. Uh, but this is, uh, you know, the next step will be OMB and Finance. Uh, we'll present this budget um, to the BCC and then again we'll go through a process where we have a budget meeting and then it'll be approved on um, in August and then at that time that's when it'll go into effect. But today you'll be giving me permission to be able to present this budget draft to the uh, finance department uh, in the county. And if you guys, without any questions, um, I'd like to request approval for the FY19 budget draft. I have a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Yeah, motion. Who we'll made the motion? I'm I sorry. Do, Mr. Chairman, I do have a couple questions. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, on, let's see, on the uh, TDC administration, we are Good there was just only a five thousand some odd dollar increase. I, I noticed on that for payroll yes, for expenses. Sir. Very um, the marketing under a contractual service we went from eighty four five to two hundred thirty eight eight. Is that from the website? Is that that um, underneath marketing? So is it under ninety fifteen? Yeah. And uh, is it um, uh, thirty four hundred or? It's uh, 3,400. 3,400? 3, yeah. um, they wanted to add, add additional marketing software and tracking programs. Uh -huh. So um, you'll see in the detailed sheet, we're, we're, at, we're adding additional software programs going to be in order to help us better collect data on our visitors that are coming in. So those new programs are that additional cost that you see. So that's what that's for. Yes, sir. Uh, just something that's helping us out. That's oh, yeah, absolutely. And in the, in the detailed page, that it, whenever we sit down and went to all, all of the information, the ones that look more like this, right. that's got it in there, a little bit of highlight, right. and uh, you'll have more detail. Uh, once I turn it in, I'll send that one again, an updated version. It's just for everyone you know. Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because uh, when you see those numbers jump like that, it's just kind of good to let everybody know what they are. Yes, sir. Um, and on the uh, research and development, a little bump on that one also. 
Yes, they, um, and Jay wanted to add some additional research uh, funding, mm -hmm. and uh, so um, to add to just the scope of services and what we already have, just try to collect more data on return on investment. And uh, so you budgeted it again for gasoline, so we're, we're good to go there. We're good to go now. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make sure we got those, uh, those we trash got vehicles to be able to pick up, get out all that trash that we accumulate every year. Got to keep them fueled. And keep Brian and his team together. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, that's all for me. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. Any other comments from the council members? Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Yeah. Gary seconds. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, sir. Mike, hope you got strong legs this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my best to be brief. Good morning. Thanks for the time. Uh, the first item there, uh, we're requesting your approval of the 2019 media plan. With that approval, we'll roll it forward for consideration for the Board of County Commission, their next available meeting. I realize that there's a quite a bit uh, in your packets and in the plan there. So what I'd like to do is point out a quick couple of highlights from a strategy perspective, and then give a little bit of a detail what each of those different categories in the media spend is, and then I'd be happy to open it up for questions uh, from there. So a couple of the big focuses uh, for 2019 are to shift away from some of the traditional media opportunities, radio and print specifically, and invest more heavily in more trackable uh, and measurable mediums, uh, digital and social more specifically. Uh, increasing our pay-per-click investment will continue our focus on the beach safety messaging program, which seems to be working very well. We will be uh, renewing our focus on activations, our um, team going out of town and participating in different events, which if you remember, we put a hold on this year uh, to fund the website redevelopment. We'll be returning to that in 2019. Um, so just a quick explanation. I realize that that Excel spreadsheet was, was lengthy and the printout that you have there is lengthy. So I'll give a quick definition of what each of the categories is, which might make it a little bit easier to understand. A big chunk of it is the leisure media, which includes uh, both the brand ads and the co-op advertising. Uh, these are just our, our brand ads promoting the destination. Another section uh, underneath that is the group sales media, promoting uh, sales and attended, uh, attendance at conventions, uh, weddings as well. Pay-per-click, so our uh, spend with Google specifically for search engine marketing. The beach safety media program, which includes the text program. Local outdoor, which you may have seen is a fairly, fairly small piece of that pie, uh, but some of the brand awareness billboards that we have here in the marketplace. Our shoulder season reserve account, uh, which is a significant portion of it, which we use to uh, promote fall and winter visitation. The event grant media, um, which we'll get into again in a little bit, but this is the portion of the event grant program where we fund the digital and social ads on behalf of the partners that have been admitted into the grant program and uh, brand activations, which I touched on a little bit, our efforts to take our team out of town and uh, engage with guests in some of our feeder markets. Overall, the our spend on the leisure group and pay-per-click uh, decreased from 18 to 19 by $116,000, which is about 7% in those categories to, touch, to fund some of the projects that Jason mentioned um, in the marketing budget outside of the media plan. So with that, I'm happy to answer any uh, strategy questions or specific media placement questions as well. I just need a clarification on, on the term flight. You're not talking flight like a plane. No, flight, just think of timing, Time. uh, dates. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Mike, uh, yes, I had asked Jay this question before. Jay, I don't know if you have it handy or not. Um, you're going to try to get, I think the overall media plan has a reduction uh, from last year? That's correct. Do you yeah. have a dollar or percentage amount on that? Yeah, it's 116,000. Uh, it's a hundred, decrease. Decrease, correct. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. No yes. question, Mike. Yes, sir. Um, on the billboards, we have four billboards. Is there any particular location or strategy behind these billboards before we put them on? 
Yeah, you, you go for visibility. One thing about South Walton is uh, we have very limited inventory of available billboards, so we are kind of at the mercy of the availability. Uh, we currently have three locations, one in Miramar Beach, one in Santa Rosa Beach, and one on Highway 331 as you're heading south and approaching the 331 bridge, welcoming visitors uh, as they enter the marketplace. Uh, we plan to continue those three, and as more opportunities arise, we'll consider them as they arise. Uh, but right now, um, we're on a waiting list. There's, there's truly nothing available here in town. So it's really on the south end, nothing on the north end or whatever. Like right. That. That's correct, yeah. Yeah, they're more, um, they're not necessarily to drive visitation, but to get our brand awareness elevated a little bit with the visitors while they're here in town. On the uh, TV series, the fishing show. Yes. Uh, we're doing, uh, we're going to go, we're going to do that again. Right. And so what was the metrics that, uh, I mean, that to, to run it again, did it do well? Sure. Did it, yeah, it's been, um, it's been seen in over a million households um, by the ratings that we've gotten back, so that's encouraging. Um, it's a great opportunity for us to have a platform on the national level um, that will give us 30 minutes of new content every week for 13 weeks. I think we learned some things this first time around with it uh, from a strategy perspective and an execution perspective that we can use to make improvements uh, in Season 2. So we talked about it as a team, um, also brought it before the marketing committee as well, and feel that it's worth reinvesting in in season two. Um, and after that, probably conducting some research to uh, get a good handle on what the ROI is and make a decision about going forward from there. Uh, but it, it's gone well enough and we're encouraged about what we've learned and what we can do in a second season that we wanted to give it another try. Okay. Have you seen it, Tim? You also get a lot of footage and video and photography mm -hmm. that's used for years to come. It's yeah. more than just a one shot, right? Uh, a one shot deal. Uh, can I go back to the billboard thing a minute um, and not lose your train of thought? <coughs> I, this is just, <clears throat> old, I'm not an old country boy, but I'm an old immigrant. <laughs> <laughs> Once somebody's here, I have a I have a heart I, I know it's real hard to get the dynamics of, of what the results of a billboard are right. <clears throat> obviously they work because they're all over the country <laughs> but once someone is here um, they're here right and and I'm, I, I'm trying to understand the reasoning behind spending that kind of money on sure. billboards when people are already here um, it's nice to have a welcome to a South Walton sign but to have you know billboards which are very expensive and you're you're saying you're on a waiting list because you'd like to put more of them up there right and, and my feeling is and, and correct me if i'm wrong how do we justify that i mean there's the billboard companies will tell you it works but sure you know that's great for maybe a shopping center or a, or a restaurant or or that sort of thing but once someone is here do we need to put up an expensive billboard to say hey you're here they're going to go really Hmm. Well, what, I'm not trying to be sarcastic. No, I understand. Yeah, it yeah. is a, a, an interesting concept. One of the biggest marketing challenges that we have, or probably the biggest, is our brand recognition. Um, and uh, Philip Downs from Downs in St. Germain and I were recently in Dallas and Atlanta conducting focus groups uh, with people who have uh, been here uh, in our 16 beach communities. Uh, and most of them refer to it as Dustin. Uh, and word of mouth is a big part of uh, travel decisions, where your neighbors go, what people have told you about where they've gone. So what we found is people are coming here having a great time and going back to Atlanta or Dallas and telling their friends they had a great time in Destin, um, which is a major problem for us because then people start Googling Destin vacations because they wanna, they've want they heard about this great experience. Um, so the, the purpose of these billboards is to get people using that term South Walton. Right now about 20% uh, of our visitors use that term which is uh, something that we definitely need to work on and, and see increasing. Yeah, we, so, we correct people all the time. Yeah, and it's a challenge and it's a, long, it's a long road, but we think the billboards, um, they are expensive. We've got $75,000 earmarked in 2019. That's if we are able to get on more boards that we're on than we currently are on. Um, in the bigger picture of our media plan, it's a pretty small portion. Uh, and we think it'll over time help us with that brand recognition. Thank you, Mike. And, and I'd also like to comment on that. I'm a huge fan of in-market branding because 
uh, for that reason, we spent a tremendous amount of money rebranding <coughs> South Walton and spent a lot of time uh, focused on getting the message out that you're in South Walton. And over the last year or so, we haven't let it go, but we haven't had the focus on it. And so in the marketing committee, there's been a lot of conversation about making sure that we're pushing South Walton uh, because people do think they're in Destin. And I think more now more than ever, it's time to really reinforce that message that you are in South Walton. And um, it's a, it's, it's what we're spending our money for. I think that's a good point. I've, I've got a couple of comments. Uh, one is in my travels as a county commissioner, it's irritating as all get out for me to say uh, I'm in District 5 and uh, I will represent the people of South Walton. And people say, where is that? And you say, well, you know, have you heard of that? Oh, yeah, we know where Destin is. And so I think it's important that we brand this area. Uh, another thing is, think back in all your travels, all your, your vehicle travels throughout wherever you've gone. Certain billboards catch your attention, and you remember them the rest of your life. Uh, I remember from 20 years ago seeing a Chick-fil-A billboard that I thought was the funniest thing I'd ever seen, <laughs> and I still think about it and think it's funny. Uh, and can tell you right where it was, when I saw it, and everything. So I, I think I think this is probably a, a really good thing we're doing, as Jim said, to brand our brand our community. Our, our this is our business. We need to make sure people know they're going to South Walton. And I, they're when they're here and they it gets reinforced. That's when they're going to remember it. Exactly. Not when they see it in Atlanta and Maggie. Mm -hmm. Uh, both good points. I'm glad I brought it up. You guys straightened me out. <laughs> <laughs> I think I interrupted you, Tim. So. No, no, we're good. I'm good. So, Mike, you, so you pointed out one of the points you make, um, shifting away from print, radio, <coughs> cable, greater emphasis on digital social media. No surprise there. Right. Uh, it's occurring all over corporate America. And, uh, could you give us an idea, some sense of maybe the percentage of total spend that's going into this social media and digital area versus the old, you know, more of the old uh, traditional media type? Sure. Um, we, I can tell you that our pay-per-click budget is $250,000, so that's our social media, or our, sorry, our search engine marketing through Google. Um, our social media advertising budget is $120,000. Uh, which is a uh, double what it is in 2018. Um, our, I can tell you real quick, just going through the numbers here, our um, brand print budget is $808,000, and that's been significantly reduced. The majority of that is in our co-op print ads. Um, there are still some publications that are valuable to us that we continue to invest in there. Uh, our brand interactive, which is basically, you can call it brand digital, uh, for display ads and that sort of thing is 1.3 million. So the, that big number is, say that again, it's, it's what category? Uh, digital. 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 Yeah. Got it. So, I don't know, I'm trying to just get a sense for the percentage. So you're, you're, you've gone way more than 50% social, digital, new age. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Got it. I've got two, uh, one more comment that they're, they also put together a plan, a program for the first time for non-bed tax collector co-op for small business to get into their co-op program. Thank you very much for sure. that. And is uh, the new website development, is that in that or is that a separate? Uh, that is separate. And a couple of the upcoming agenda items are both on the co-op program and the, the website okay. as well. Thank you. Uh, so the co-op media buy is included in this overall media plan. Any other comments or questions from the council? Okay. We need a motion, I think. All right. Yeah. Need a motion to uh, approve the <clears throat> FY19 media plan. So move. Second. So got a got a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. Mr. Aye. Bell. Aye. Oh, we we need a lot of public comment before we actually vote. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Glad you're here this morning. <laughs> I didn't mean that sarcastically either. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it either way. <laughs> I want you to take it the right way. <laughs> Is there any public comments on our request for approval for the FY19 media plan from the public? 
Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion passes. Mike, do you have the next one? I do, thanks very much. So the next one, um, Jim brought up the co-op plan. So the, the media buy uh, that goes along with the co-op plan is in the overall media plan. What we've got before you today is just kind of the program guidelines. Uh, this was pre presented uh, and approved unanimously by the Marketing and Communications Committee on May 15th. With your approval, we'll roll it up to the Board of County Commissioners for their approval as well. Uh, but just a quick refresher, this is the program that allows our partners to participate in our media buy uh, and share in that buy and share in some of that ad space with us. So um, we've got a total of 287 opportunities. Uh, they're divided up into a couple of different categories. In leisure, there's print, interactive, and also an email sweepstakes component. We do separate out uh, group sales opportunities, both uh, print and interactive, and same with weddings as well. Um, this year, as Jim mentioned, uh, after hearing a lot of feedback from the community, we, where we historically have made this available only to bed tax collectors, we've identified 18 specific opportunities out of that 287 um, to offer to non-bed tax collectors, the folks in the activities, dining, and shopping categories for the first time. Um, we wanted to uh, give it a try after hearing a lot of feedback about it. As we've seen in our research, uh, every quarter those are things that people value quite a bit uh, in making their vacation decisions. Um, so we're excited to open those up. Just a couple of quick notes on it. We did increase the rates this year by 20% flat across the board. That's the first price increase we've had in seven years uh, on this program. Historically, media rates increase 7% per year, uh, so we are long overdue for uh, an increase. Um, so we did increase that, and that increases most of these from anywhere from $50 to $300. Uh, so dollar figure-wise, not significant to our partners. Um, also, this year, we don't have visitor guide co-op ads. Uh, and that's really a, a factor of timing. And when I get into the marketing updates later, I'll talk about the visitor guide, uh, and that's coming out soon. Because we redeveloped the visitor guide this year, uh, the current visitor guide will really be out for a year and a half, the one that's in the marketplace currently. So the, those advertisers get a little extra bonus in it. We, um, the ones that are running now, the ones that are in the guide that's about to come out in the next couple of weeks will also be in for about a year and a half. Um, just as, again, a matter of timing. So over a three-year period, we'll really have two co-op sales opportunities for the visitor guide. For We didn't want, because this one took longer and we want to get to a more an annual basis on these publications, uh, our opportunities were either bonus folks a little bit extra time or cut their time short, which we didn't feel was fair to them. So when you go through there, you'll, you won't see visitor guide opportunities which we've seen historically in the past, and that, that explains why that is. Um, again, this was brought to the Marketing Committee on May 15th, um, was discussed there and unanimously approved of there. So with your approval, I'm happy to answer any questions, and uh, with your approval, be happy to bring it forward to the Board of County Commissioners. Any comments from the Council? Mm -hmm. Any uh, public comments on <clears throat> FY19 Cooperative Advertising Plan? Saying none, I need a motion. So moved. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mike. Sure. Mike, keep right on going. Yeah, I hope you're strong. stuck with me for a little longer. Uh, so the next item that we have there uh, is the 2019 North Walton Event Support Program. Uh, you may remember that in this year we spent a lot of time uh, with the events committee and the marketing committee as well and revamped the South Walton uh, event program. Um, that program didn't really fit the needs uh, or make much sense for those events in North Walton, which has a separate committee. Uh, those events really have different objectives uh, and different needs than those in South Walton. So we decided to make a separate program for those, isol um, simplify it quite a bit and come up with some new guidelines. So what you'll see there, which was approved on May 23rd by the North Walton Events Committee, um, is a more simplified program that works much more like a sponsorship program. The biggest needs of these uh, events in the North Pond of the County is funding, um, not necessarily marketing support like we see in South Walton. So similar to the South Walton program, uh, applicants will fill out an application. 
uh, they will be reviewed by the North Walton Events Committee uh, and either be identified as a signature North Walton event or an experienced North Walton event. Um, the sponsorship fees for signature events are $6,000, um, experience events $3,000 and it will be up to the North Walton Events Committee to determine which of the applications are, are worthy of the program and at what levels of support. Uh, so it simplifies the program quite a bit for those North Walton events, still gives us an opportunity to support their financial needs, um, and it gives us a little bit of tighter guidelines on how we're supporting them and at what dollar amounts. How many current events are in North Walton? Uh, I believe it's six. Are there any of those events that are, you know, kind of traditional, long-standing, getting traction with uh, tourism numbers? I mean, like, None. In a sense, maybe some of the more popular events uh, out of those. Yeah, probably the most successful event that takes place in the north part of the county is uh, the basketball tournament that takes place between Christmas and New Year's in Freeport. Um, those folks stay, they have uh, relationships with hoteliers in the south end of the county. Uh, they bring nearly 30 teams from all over the southeast to stay uh, for five days or a week or so. Um, that one stands out as probably the most successful from a tourism standpoint. The others um, have much greater value in a uh, kind of a community uh, quality of life type of standpoint, not so much as tourism drivers. Is one of the events you're referring to the uh, Chautauqua uh, Festival? Yes, they've historically been on the program. Okay. That that's, does seem to draw a lot of people, probably more than what can be housed in Defuniac. In Defuniac, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you say this is, uh, this is uh, budget and these guidelines have been reviewed by North Walton. Yes. And, and they are approved. They, they approved this plan? They did. Okay. Mm. Are you finished with this one? I am. <laughs> and with your approval, I'll take it to the Board of I'll Commission. I'll make a motion to approve the North Walton Event Support Program. Second. Second. Any comments from the public? <clears throat> we have motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Mike, you got, your name's on, it, on a lot of these this morning. <laughs> I, I appreciate all the time. So the next uh, item there is requesting your approval of the 2019 South Walton events that have been um, scored and accepted into the program by the events committee. Um, those are in your packet. They're on the screen here as well. Mm -hmm. Just kind of a, a refresher when we approved the guidelines a couple months ago. Um, the events committee would score all the applications based on certain criteria. Um, they would have a cumulative score of between 0 and 100. Those scoring above 70 would be admitted into the program. Um, these, uh, this is the lineup of events that scored above 70. Uh, we're very encouraged by, uh, by this lineup. They were, they were ratified by the marketing committee, or sorry, the events committee on May 29th. Um, it's a great lineup of events. It's more than we had last year, or this year rather. Um, some of those that had historically participated that did not participate this year uh, have come back onto the program. Some new folks have, uh, have applied with some new um, growing events. So uh, we're very enthusiastic about this lineup. And with your approval of these events, we'll take it to the Board of County Commissioners for their approval and then begin uh, executing the plan. Um. <clears throat> Mike, I've got a note here I'd like to just share with the, with the council. Sure. But just so that you all know, all of these events here, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, uh, all the events listed here in our contributions total $642,000. So that, that may be a little bit helpful than just looking at a list. This is the dollar amounts that we're looking at, okay? So we raised that from 550 last year, was it 550000 it was, yeah, it was approximately 550 last year in that budget line item. But because of some of the things we were doing, we were also pulling from other portions of the budget to support these events. Uh, so this is actually a decrease, and I'm sorry, I don't have that exact number uh, in front of me currently on the total dollar amount. One of the um, components of this year's program was your score out of 100 would be multiplied by the maximum benefit that you could receive based on the type of event. Um, so those folks that scored you know, 94s 
uh, receive near the maximum, some squeak five just above 70, so they'd be getting a little bit less. Um, the events committee thought it was appropriate to give less support and less funding to those who didn't meet our needs and goals as much as the ones that scored higher. Um, and that $642,000 number uh, is a maximum number. So uh, a big portion or 50% of the program is a paid media matching grant. So assuming that all of these max out their matching grant, uh, then we get to $642,000. But we anticipate that some will choose to spend less of their own money on paid media and therefore will get less of a match from us. And, and real quick, if I might add, Mike, um, for the figure, we were looking at probably about $750,000. That's what we were basing the number on for this budget. So <coughs> while we only are funding, what was it, 640? We had anticipated a few more coming on board, and we would have funded those, obviously, if we would have had them come on board. Like, Digital Graffiti did not come on board again this year. So there were a couple that we were anticipating would, and we would have funded them, obviously. So the number could have been higher near that 750 figure. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments from the council? Have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. A motion second any public comments um, request for approval of the F uh, Y19 South Walton events none seen all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. those opposed motion carries okay thanks all right my next item there uh, has to do with the redesign and relaunch of the website so if you remember from the last several meetings we Put, in, put on RFP uh, and got proposals back for a rebuild of our website, which is being budgeted uh, or paid for the 2018 budget. Right, Mike, yes, can sir. I interrupt you for sure. just a minute? Council members, if you look at the far right hand corner, um, did we get those corrected? We couldn't have. The uh, DigiPro Media, the final right hand corner there, where it says mm -hmm. 125 per hour. That figure should read 219,875. Uh, track tech, um, that figure should read 270, 735 only, so scratch the 195. And on Zender, the third one, that one should read um, 285, 285,000, so scratch the 225,600. And so now you have the correct total figures. Y'all get it? Mm -hmm. Or did I go too fast? Mm -hmm. I'm letting Tony scratch here a minute. Go ahead, Mike. Sorry for that. Oh, no problem. I appreciate the clarification. Um, if you see the uh, the scores there, these um, were reviewed by the evaluation committee that was Tim Norris, Jay Tusa, and myself. Uh, we scored them independently. You see the top three scores there with Sender Communications coming in at 88, Track Tech at 80, and DigiPro at 67. Um, Zender had the highest cumulative score. They also scored the highest uh, individually on each of our three score sheets. Uh, so with your approval, we'd like to move to the BCC to request approval uh, to execute a contract with Zender Communications for development of our new website. So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any comments from the public? <clears throat> motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Go Mike. All right. On uh, May 8th, we're talking about our, our advisory committees for a couple minutes. On May 8th, the Board of County Commissioners, um, you may remember, we, we changed the size of these committees from nine members down to seven uh, in order to have a better chance of getting a quorum of four. Uh, some of our committees were, were struggling with attendance, and we were all often scrambling to get a, a quorum. Uh, so we went to seven uh, with a quorum of four. The board has asked us in an effort to get more of the community involved and get some more diversity on these committees to go back to nine uh, while maintaining a quorum of four. So what we're doing is getting back from seven up to nine. So I'm coming today to ask approval on a couple of new committee members. For the Marketing and Communications Committee, we actually have to add three, uh, two to fill those 
previously non-existent seats and one to replace someone who has dropped off the committee. So those that we'd like to add are Ron Couget from Howard Hospitality, Sarah Braswell from Santa Rosa Golf and Beach Club, and Larry Green from Emerald Coast Transportation. And that would get us to nine for the Marketing and Communications Committee. Any comments from the council? Motion to approve. Got a motion. Second. Got a second. Any comments from the public? Just real quick, Mr. Chairman, uh, just to elaborate on what Mike spoke to uh, for the committees and the quorum, uh, the board did vote to uh, reduce the number required for a quorum from five to four. So now, by that being a vote of the board uh, with nine members, we can have a quorum with four um, folks. So just want to clarify that. Got it. Thank you. Any comments up from the public on 18 0770? None seen. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 0771, Mike. All right. So, a similar scenario for the events, activities, of arts, and culture committee. We have seven to get up to nine. We'd like to add Jan Bargeron Serafin from 30A Gourmet and Kathleen Broderick. Uh, local artist who's our current um, South Wallen Artist of the Year to that committee to get us from seven up to nine. Any comments? Motion. Motion to approve. Motion second. Second. Got a motion and second. Any comments from the public? None seen. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mike, aye. you can sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate all the time. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you very much, Mike. Brian, good morning, sir. Good morning, Chairman, Council Members. Brian Kellenberger, Great River Beach Operations. Appreciate your time this morning. Uh, I, too, am liaison for two committees, the uh, Destination Improvement and the Beach Management Committee. We're increasing our members to nine as well. And so for the uh, Beach Management Advisory Committee, we're requesting approval for Lisa Bauschi and Debbie Hurd. Lisa Bauschi is a Gulffront property owner former member of the Customary Use Committee. Debbie Hurd is a member of the Coastal Dune Lake Advisory Board, as well as a realtor and a um, rental business owner. Any comments from the questions from the council? <coughs> Any motion? So moved. Second, anybody? Second. We have a second. Any comments from the public on 0768? I'm seeing all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Aye, Brian. Next one is for our Destination Improvement Committee. And the two members we would like to add is John Toombs and John Welburn. John Toombs is owner of Harmony Beach uh, Vacations, property management company. And uh, John Welburn is owner of Livewell 30A, a uh, local um, a uh, rental company does beach vending and other concierge type service, as okay. well as property management. He'd be a good guy on there for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both of them. Uh, we were lucky on our initial uh, request for applications. We had a lot of good applicants, so I was able to go back and pull from that pool. Wonderful. Make a motion to approve. <clears throat> second. Motion and second. Any comments from the public on 0769? <clears throat> on seeing all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank, thank you, you very Brian. much. Oh, and just publicly, I want to say thank you very, very much for getting the bike path opened by Memorial Day. Yes, sir. We achieved substantial completion on the uh, 25th. Still have a little bit of work due to final complete, but uh, looking at middle of the month. It, it so, looks absolutely wonderful. Yeah. So thank you very much. Yes, sir. I'm glad I didn't have to do that job. Mr. Tusa, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and council members. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here with you today. I think we're moving right along considering the volume of business that we're conducting today. So uh, I'll be brief uh, in my presentation here. So real quick, wanted to give you an update. Uh, we were successful in uh, moving forward with the properties on 331 for a new uh, visitor center and office complex for the TDC. So congratulations to all of us that we can finally move forward with the new visitor center. Um, Obviously, that's something that's been in the crosshairs for this organization for a long time, and we're able to get that done. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, the closing for the properties will be June 15th, and then uh, what I plan to do is bring an RFQ forward to the Board of County Commissioners on June 25th at that meeting. So uh, what I'd like to do is ask a recommendation from uh, the TDC here 
today uh, to uh, request approval and recommendation to the BCC to move forward with an RFQ for design engineering services for a new TDC facility. And so let me just kind of give you a little bit of background on that requested item. Um, I feel it would be best after uh, talking to some folks um, within the county from a design and construction standpoint just to do an RFQ for design. And uh, we would do a separate RFP for construction. Um, I think for what we're looking for uh, in this uh, facility is very specialized. And I think that um, especially considering our pool uh, that we have for uh, continuing services in the regards for design, uh, I'm not saying those firms can't do this, but I don't want to limit uh, our choices to just those firms. So I think this is probably the best way to move forward uh, so we can kind of see what's the best and brightest for uh, design of this new facility. Um, as I just mentioned, obviously this is something that's very important to us, so we really want to make sure we have the best out there to design this building for us. So a uh, few things that we'll put in the RFQ. Uh, I don't have it here for you today for review, but I don't really think that's necessary. Uh, but one thing that we'll put in there obviously is uh, requirements uh, that they utilize the current building uh, in some form or fashion. Uh, what that exactly looks like, I don't know, but we'll see what they come back and recommend. Uh, that's what we go to and hire these architects for, is for them to bring back their recommendations. Uh, so obviously, you know, we'll look at that. Um, I would like to speculate uh, at this point that we try to uh, minimize the wetlands use. So I'm going to put that in there as well. Uh, if we don't have to mitigate that, that will certainly save us time and money. So uh, I'm not going to say that we won't do it, but I'm just going to put in there that it's a preference that we really try to minimize uh, any mitigation that is necessary. Um, and then that we, you know, try to maximize parking on the site as much as possible. So those are just a few things. Um, you know, obviously we have a lot of great local architects here in this area. So I think if we can hire one from here locally, that'll be advantageous from a few standpoints. One certainly from a designer being able to tout that we use the local architect, but also from a construction standpoint that we have a local architect here on board who will be able to really interact and interface with the construction component. I think that'll be very beneficial as well. So but we'll see. Obviously, I think we can make that a preference but it all depends on how the scoring ultimately goes. So that's just a little bit of background. Uh, and like I said, I'd like to bring this to the board uh, at their June 25th meeting. Any questions or comments from the council? Get a motion. Make a motion. Second. Get a motion and a second. Any comments from the public on um, 763 Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Is there any old business that we need to bring up at this point? I have it on my agenda here, but I don't know of any. Okay, Mike. <laughs> we, we gave you a five minute rest. <laughs> I think this is your last hurrah. Right? <laughs> this is it. Just a couple of updates uh, from the marketing department. Uh, there should be in your packet, not displaying on the screen currently, but some recent initiatives that I'd like to just give an update on. Um, this council and ultimately the Board of County Commissioners, you may remember, approved the bus a couple months ago, moving forward with spending some money in Dallas and Charlotte to promote the new American Airlines flights uh, that start tomorrow, I believe. So that advertising is up in those airports, uh, as well as some uh, digital opportunities targeting, targeting folks in those markets. So I believe you should have a, a photo. I'm sorry, it's not... Uh, on the screen there currently. Um, so we're excited about that and see how those new flights uh, impact visitation from those markets. We also uh, invested uh, last year in some new 360 degree videos. Uh, those three videos have received a total of 228,000 views since October, or rather November rather. Uh, so we'll continue to move forward with that project and hope to see those uh, numbers continue to be strong. I'm not sure if any of our visuals are going to display, but um, print collateral update. We've talked extensively about the visitor guide. I'm happy to say it's done. It's been sent to the printer, and we'll start sending shipping to homes this month. Uh, so we're excited to have that project behind us. It was a big uh, overhaul of the design and functionality of that piece. So we're excited to have that shipping to homes. Um, you should have in front of you Saver, our dining guide that we talked about a little while back. Uh, it's done, it's produced, it's out in the marketplace, uh, promotes our local culinary scene uh, and our restaurants, 
also talks about the winners of the perfect awards in the dining categories. So we think this is going to be a, a nice in-market piece for us to help the visitor while they're here in town. Uh, we all know that uh, dining and the restaurant scene here is a big part of the vacation experience. So we're excited to have that project done and that will become a, an annual publication that will continue to produce. We are still working on our uh, wedding specific publication as well that Dawn and her team will use for interested brides and families of brides that request information specific to uh, visitation as it relates to weddings. I'll move forward that you should have in your packet there. The next page should say digital analysis. Just wanted to show some of the statistics from uh, March and April so you can see the impressions that we're getting out in the digital space. Um, the click-through rate remains strong across both the brand special events and the co-op program, so we're, we're encouraged about that. We continue, continue to monitor all those programs and reinvest where it's successful and make changes where necessary. Um, on the bottom of that page, I've highlighted a couple of the higher performing platforms that significantly outpace the standard industry click-through rates. Um, so again, we'll, we'll continue to reinvest in that technology, and that's a big part of the 2019 media plan as well. See how we do. The uh, next slide you have there talks about website traffic. Uh, from a high level perspective, I wanted to get these numbers kind of in front of us going forward so that when the new website launches, we have a good uh, benchmark to look at. Um, as you see there, the change has been good for the current period versus the same period from the previous year. Uh, it's also got the uh, past 12 months numbers there as a comparison. Like I said, when we get the new website launched, this will give us a nice baseline to look at and, and see where we can go with these numbers. The bottom half of that slide talks about how they're getting to our website. About 70% of them are getting there either through paid display ads, uh, organic search results, or paid search uh, through search engine marketing. And the map there is kind of helpful to show where these folks are coming from. Uh, and that is number of sessions is what that map represents. So. Uh, Atlanta, which is almost covered up by some of the surrounding areas of Atlanta, Houston and Dallas are some big ones for us. No surprise there. Um, Chicago stands out a little bit when you look at that map. I was a little bit surprised to see them. Uh, they do have a high population base, so it makes some sense there. We did do uh, some marketing in the fall specific to Chicago. So as we look at uh, visitation for this year, we'll see if we see an increase from that market. So my quick question yes, is, uh, percent changes are huge. Yeah. I mean, is, is that current period, month versus last year, same period? Or uh, is that year to day, or how is that measured? That is uh, March and April combined of 18 versus March and April combined of 17. Right. Uh, a lot of that is due to the fact that in this year's event program, we are paying for digital and social ads on behalf of our event partners, which we had not done in the past. Uh, so that is a significant new digital spend that didn't exist before. So our event pages on our website are getting a lot of hits uh, and a lot of traffic, and that's a, a big part of that percentage change. Right. Yeah. Uh, regarding, I got Please a question. Strategy. Sorry, yeah. I apologize. No, okay. uh, regarding the digital analysis, when you look at the brand campaign, special events, and the co-op, the March impressions for co-op is higher, but yet brand and special events is higher in April. What you would think they would all be higher in one month, lower in the other, but why is there a flip up there? Uh, a lot of it has to do with what events take place during those months, uh, how many co op partners we have on the program in those months, and what percentage of the overall digital spend the co op and um, event programs take up versus the overall brand campaign. Quick look at the social media numbers. We talked about um, in the budgeting and the media plan process significantly increasing our spend on um, social media. Uh, organic growth uh, is slowing down, uh, and almost non-existent in a couple of the platforms. So nice numbers to take a look at. We're, we're happy with where most of those audiences are as we continue to invest in paid advertising um, with the changes that some of these platforms are making. We'll continue to see uh, growth across those.
Okay, quickly want to talk about some research that was conducted since we last met and reported on by Downs and St. Germain. We have results from the visitor, winter visitor tracking study, uh, which talks to folks that were here in December, January, and February of this past winter. If you would click forward a couple for me, Gabby, to the map slide. Okay, you should have in your um, packet there, the first slide under research should be a map showing where these folks are coming from in the, in the winter. Um, not too surprising there, the biggest shift in the winter that we don't see in the other three months is a greater emphasis coming from the Midwest uh, and less coming from the South. The South continues to be over 50% of our visitation, uh, but would you see some more international and Midwestern visitors during those months? Just to go over some of the key findings from the uh, study, and I believe you have the entire study in your packet, but 91% uh, of those surveyed plan to return to South Walton, and they rated it a 9 out of 10 uh, as a quality tourism destination, so encouraging numbers there. Top activities, this is really uh, different than the other three seasons of the year. Restaurants being number one, uh, place to relax, and number two, shopping is number three, uh, and beach comes in at 94, only 72% of the people indicating that that's uh, something that they enjoy doing here, that they look forward to doing here on their vacation. So uh, major departure from the other three months of the year. There's been a major shift in, in this page compared to even five years ago. Mm -hmm. it's, um, <clears throat> it's not like we don't like snowbirds, but 5% right. you know, from Canada is a pretty small number when it used to be 90%. Yeah, I'll talk about it. So on the, the next page is kind of interesting, which might kind of help explain that a little bit. Not, uh, that, not that they're tied or anything. But. <laughs> the next slide there, um, you see, I apologize, I'm a slide ahead of myself, but some of the economic year-over-year -year comparisons, you see occupancy is up, uh, total visitors is up a little bit, pretty much uh, in line with bed tax collections. What's encouraging is that the economic impact and the direct spending of those visitors uh, is growth is far outpacing the growth of visitation. Uh, so, so those folks that are coming are a higher quality visitor that are spending more money while they're here in the marketplace. But we're still seeing an increase in occupancy and room rate. Okay. So my last slide there talks about, it's kind of an interesting slide that I wanted to share. It talks about the different types of visitors. Uh, if you can click forward one slide if that's possible. Uh, that were tracked during this study, during this time period. Uh, so it separa separates out the long-term visitor, which we typically call the snowbird, or the winter resident that's here for more than 10 days. The vacationer, which has a vacation pattern a little bit more typical to what we see in the other three seasons, uh, close to a week or so, and then a day tripper. Um, so Richard, to answer your question, those long-term visitors, 19% of those are international, uh, being mostly from Canada. Uh, that makes up the bulk of our international visitation for the year. Uh, those folks, not surprisingly, far less likely to travel with children, a lower income level um, than what we see the rest of the year, uh, and a definitely a much higher age than what we see in the other three seasons. Right. The, the middle column there, the vacationer, uh, whose travel habits are more the, the weekly stays, similar to what we see the rest of the year. Uh, they have a median household income closer to what we expect the rest of the year. Uh, a little bit more likely to travel with children uh, and big drop off in the international visitation. So I uh, just thought it was interesting to break those out. Uh, the research was conducted by Downs and St. Germain and uh, I believe you have their full report in your packet. We gave you a very condensed version here. I'm happy to answer any questions you've got for me. Nice job, Mike. Thank you very much. Do we, uh, Jay, do we vote on each one of these or do, um Pardon me? Uh, not any, any one of these attachments. Okay. Just updates. Okay. Hey, I'm just trying to make sure I'm doing my job right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mike, I think you can take a seat for, for good now. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Morning, Dawn. Good morning, Council. How are you this morning? Uh, we're going to do a few quick updates for what's happening in group sales. Uh, late April, we assisted the PR team in hosting a media fan for meetings and incentive publications. It went great, and David will review more of that later. Uh, we also hosted our quarterly lunch and learn with our partners in May. Uh, this was an opportunity for us to get some feedback from them as far as what their priorities are from a business standpoint 
for next year so that we could align our marketing strategies and advertising with where their needs are, soft periods if there are from a group and a wedding standpoint. Got some great feedback from them. Um, in late May, we attended Connect Incentive. This was the first time we had ever attended this trade show. Uh, we did so at the request of our partners because that's a segment that we're trying to go after a little bit more. We had 29 scheduled appointments, uh, all new clients. No clients had ever even heard of South Walton to the point of earlier today. So it was great um, to be able to educate that that segment um, about our area and we'll continue to develop those relationships. Uh, last week we participated with Sandestin uh, for Georgia Society of Association Executives. Uh, we co-hosted the opening reception. It was um, an exceptional experience uh, by Sandestin. I've got, heard so many accolades from the planners about what a great opportunity it was to see this area. It had been so long and Georgia associations are allowed to travel outside of their um, outside of their state, so I think we'll see some great business in the future from it. Upcoming, uh, next week we'll be in Nashville. Uh, we have approximately 60 clients that we're entertaining in two different events, corporate, association, and third-party planners. We've got six uh, accommodation partners coming with us, and we're also taking Chris Alvarado as our musical artist, niche artist of the year. He'll be entertaining, and then uh, Marisol, uh, 2017 Artist of the Year, will be painting and giving away her art. So it'll be a great opportunity to showcase what uh, we have down here and let them meet some local artists. Um, next, we'll be sponsoring the Georgia MPI, Meeting Planners International Luncheon, in July. That's in Atlanta. We're expecting about 120 people at that event. It'll be a complete branded experience, much like we did in Dallas last year. Video, scent machine, um, talking about our uh, everything that we have down here, and I think it will be a great focus for us for the corporate events in Atlanta. With a couple of partners going with us uh, to that as well. And then one more first-time event, uh, also at the request of our partners. Uh, we'll be attending Cvent Connect in late July. We are booth sharing with the Hilton, and Sandestin Resort is beside us. So we will be three strong for that first time event. So we're really excited about that. That's cool. Ooh, so sorry. Uh, phase three, our three phase postcard has been out to all 900 Helms Briscoe uh, account executives, and now we're following up by email and phone for uh, leads for that. Wedding brochure still in design, as Mike mentioned getting some good feedback from our partners is make sure that we are focusing on the things that are key to them. You have a special offers brochure in front of you. That's a first time publication that we've done. 49 vendors, including restaurants, activities like paddle boarding, bike rentals, and then shopping participated in this. It's offering a discount to our group attendees and we've included that in their registration bags for a couple. We just, just came out two weeks ago. Um, very well received, and it's a good opportunity to get some of our, um, our small businesses in front of the groups who may just be a captured audience, and it's gone over really well. Uh, a lot of our groups say, what else can you do for us, and we want to know more about what's out in the area. So uh, more to come on that, but so far it's been well received. And then we are... Working on an opt-in postcard um, in design for our group database just to make sure that we're compliant when reaching out to all of our planners through email. Visitor center numbers uh, continue to look strong. Our visitor count for March of 2018, 2,102 visitors, which was an 18% increase from the 2017 <coughs> numbers. And then in April, 1,388 visitors, which was a 10% decrease year over year. But as we've talked about, the switch in Easter and spring break, we think that had something to do with those numbers. Uh, year to date through April, we've had 11,212 visitors to the center, which is a 16% increase from last year. 
Merchandise sales, March, $8,357, which was a 96% increase from 2017. April, $7,014, which was a 73% increase from last year. And so I'm happy to report that year-to-date April, we reached $42,540 in total sales. That is a 205% increase from last year. And we have now surpassed all of last year's revenue with five more months to go in the fiscal year. So all of that will be gravy. Are there any questions that I can answer for you? Good job, huh? Thank you. I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, David. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. morning. David Demarest, Director of Communications. Uh, got some slides here to show you and then a last minute addition as well. Uh, to start with the slides, if you're familiar with this view, um, you may notice that our numbers have really skyrocketed since the last term. A lot of that has to do with um, some large placements we've gotten. It also has to do with it being ahead of the summer season, so we're picking up uh, articles that are more beach related and, and that's just the time for those sort of stories to come out. Um, but you'll see that the uh, impressions and media value went way up. Um, we've also been hosting press trips. Don mentioned the uh, meetings and incentive fam trip. In addition to that, we did one focused on uh, the arts over the digital graffiti fan uh, time period. Um, a quick assist with Visit Florida and it was over, unfortunately, the exact same uh, date rate that we already plan planned ours for. Uh, and then a uh, quick individual fan trip with a representative of Fathom Media after that. Um, those all tend to pay off really well. If we host them on a trip, um, we have near 100% expectation that a, a positive story will come out of it. Uh, and we get to see those pay off later. Our current pitches are the uh, Underwater Museum of Art, which has been doing very well for us. Um, and then some more general themes, such as 48 Hours in South Walton, exploring the beach community's architecture, um, and see if we can uh, get interest in the 20th anniversary of the Truman Show in Seaside coming up soon. We have a, uh, a UK writer who has been working on that. Um, let's see, to see some of the highlights, uh, from March through May, uh, USA Today, Condé Nast, Outside Magazine, MSN was one of the uh, the ones that really added to the number of the impressions. That was for the Underwater Museum of Art. Um, Fox News actually picked up a, another story that included us in uh, best places to bike this summer. Um, Want to stay in our uh, our bread basket? Uh, so it's nice to see Atlanta Journal Constitution um, seeing payoffs already from the My Spam trip uh, meetings today. And uh, while the, the events listings are, uh, are tapering off a little bit as we move away from event season, we did get quite a few in there as well, which, which helps. So you can see uh, just some of the clippings, pictures worth a thousand words. Uh, St. Louis, USA Today, kind of nest. Oops, too far. There's uh, Mental Floss is the story. That's the one that started out about uh, Uma and got picked up by MSN. So sometimes feeding those uh, smaller outlets can really lead to big things, as that one did. Um, Coastal Living and the Fox News uh, highlight that I mentioned as well. Next thing I wanted to talk about, and these just got completed uh, yesterday, so I didn't have time to put it on the agenda, but we've been working on it for, uh, for what feels like forever, and it's been uh, with the printer for quite a while now. Uh, this South Walton Expert Binder in front of you. Uh, we got about 130 pages of information on South Walton, um, and it will continue to grow. This is going to be, and is, a living document. Um, as far as these hard copies, they'll go to our, uh, our councils or commissions. Uh, it'll also be available to every uh, bed tax collector. Um, that's something we're happy. And this is going to help people tell the story of South Walton. So we want to make everybody in our community an expert on South Walton. So if somebody asks you about weddings or fishing licenses, there's a chapter for each of those. If you want a quick reference for annual events, hiking trails, um, 
I tell people if all you read are the fact sheets and talking points at the front, which is three pages, you will know a lot about South Walton. And you'll be able to answer those questions that we see coming in a lot, such as, what's the temperature going to be like in March? Um, these are common questions that are also kind of uh, difficult to answer, but in the fact sheets and talking points segment, we've got a temperature chart for air and water. We've got information on turtles. We've got just about everything we could think of at that point. Now, that being said, we have since thought of more things, um, which is why on the front of the binder and on the uh, table of contents page, there's a website to go to. At that website, any of our partners, anyone at all in the world really can uh, download each of these chapters as a Word file. So if there's something in there you want changed, if there's something you want in there omitted, um, you can download that and do it immediately yourself. You can send us an email. Um, there's a link to send an email on that page as well. We will update it. Um, as restaurants open and close, uh, that's going to be a constant update, um, So, we, which we're already currently doing. Uh, the restaurant guide section of it is about 50 pages just itself, but it's arranged by neighborhood. Um, if you want to know where to go eat in Miramar Beach, Rosemary Beach, Alice Beach, we've got you, uh, we've got several suggestions in there for all of those. Um, this is something that uh, the, the entire team worked really hard on. Took a lot of people, uh, and I'm really proud of it. I don't know of another destination um, that does one of these. So we may be the only DMO that, that does this. It's great. Um, I agree. I really like it. But, uh, one quick, uh, one question now. Um, I do get a question on how do you get a dog permit for dogs mm -hmm. for the beach? Is that in here? That's in there. It is in here. Dog friendly? Dog friendly. So not only information about the permit, but also where you can take your dog without a permit and where you can stay. Uh, I have a question for you, David. Uh, <coughs> being that we're in hurricane season. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what those are. I, I agree. Uh, but, you know, a big complaint of mine, and it's not with y'all, it's with the weather channel. Mm -hmm. If there's a cloud out in the Gulf, it's Armageddon for the Gulf Coast. Uh, do we have a mechanism like if you watched the Weather Channel all weekend, uh, Memorial Day weekend, you would have thought that South Walton, Oklahoma County, Bay County were all going to be wiped, wiped off the map. Do we have a mechanism after that type of storm where it's not bad? Do we have a mechanism to say, hey, we're okay to let the public, not, not the local public, but to let our visitors, potential visitors know that we're okay? I know uh, Tuesday after Memorial Day, we had a meeting with the governor in Defuniac, and he picked up the phone and called Visit South, I mean, Visit Florida, mm -hmm. and said, send out a message that the panhandle's not damaged. Mm -hmm. But do we have a local way to do that also? Yes, often we'll, uh, we'll put out an all clear sign okay. afterwards through press releases or through social media. Pictures, again, are, are worth a thousand words. Right. We like to get that out on, on social. Um, the difficulty you run into is that uh, nothing happened is not a, a real um, sticky story for people to pick up on. But I agree with you, um, the, the weather in my backyard was not so bad. The weather on my TV was terrible. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that, that can be tricky because if there's a, if there's a mud puddle, that's where it's going to be. Right. The, that's where the filming happens. Tommy, we have the <coughs> alert. South Walton thing, mm -hmm. and I got it in my phone. I did my, but I'll get that. But my point in bringing that up is that's to kind of warn you of a storm. <clears throat> it certainly be a neat way to, since that system's already in place, is to kind of give an all clear, you know, an all clear mm -hmm. signal and say, you know, you get the you get the information, then you have to put yes that you've con you know to confirm that you got that information. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe we could use that mechanism to do an all clear. Please, you know, type yes to confirm. Mm -hmm. To just let everybody know it's over. You know, all the turn your television open. off and go back outside. And and during this Can last, yeah, during this last storm, um, we sent out some uh, some information to the bed tax collectors. 
um, emphasizing that there was not a mandatory evacuation um, and explaining a little bit um, why there was, it, what was confusing to a lot of people, and I think it, it's just going to be really tough to get past, is when the governor declares a state of emergency for all of Florida, uh, or when, when the county has to declare a state of emergency, um, we know that that's being done to get funding in place, to get things ready so they can respond quickly. Um, but many of our, our visitors, you know, or they hear that on the news, and that, that's hard to understand. Um, Do y'all hammer social media after, like, say, starting Tuesday after Memorial Day? Do y'all continually go on there for a week or so and say, hey, we were not damaged, we're, we're good to go? Our, our message in this sense is more along the lines of it's a beautiful day in South Walton. Okay. Come visit. Um, yeah. We don't, we don't talk a lot about, you know, the damage because, if, you know, we, we worry a lot about the people who were watching the news, but we also don't want to alarm the people who, who weren't. Right, right. Uh, is it increased after a, a storm that headed our way, the, the, that message? We have budget to respond to that. Okay. Um, we didn't trigger that budget this time. Okay. What about putting together a real South Walton Weather Channel? Yeah. Day, to day to day, hour to hour observation. I, I saw some people that did some pretty funny uh, weather cut-ins where they would uh, they would kind of make fun of the, the overblown coverage. It, it's a great idea, and I'm not laughing at it. But it's it's sad that it is what it is to, today. To combat, I, mean, I look I, same way. I mean, being in business here. The Monday, you know, before Memorial Day, I was like, yep, there you go. Yeah. yeah. I don't know about you, Gary, and Mark, but we have clobbered, you know, our hotels, but it was just ridiculous when you had, you know, these uh, reporters crawling all over the beach, and it's beautiful and sunny, and on the maps, they got this big swirl, this red mm -hmm. cone coming at us, and it was a big nothing. Uh, and, and it, very painful. Yeah. It kind of arrives a day late most of the time, so, yeah. you know, if you were planning on leaving on Monday, you vacation really didn't have to be interrupted at all. I, I, I think the Weather Channel uses uh, fans and hoses so that they must wear <laughs> raincoats. Uh, one thing to consider, uh, the, the folks up at Emergency Management, Jeff and, and Chris, are very willing to listen to feedback um, from our partners. Last year we did arrange a, a meeting down here so that they could hear specifically uh, from partners about the concerns. And they've been much more cognizant about um, understanding the ramifications of a mandatory evacuation. Um, part of the problem is just with that position, with that job, your mindset is, you know, you want to take every safety precaution available to you. Um, and so as, uh, as a TDC, as uh, those of us who, who <coughs> depend on the economy in South Walton, it's very important that we remind them. Hey, there's a, there's another side of this. You don't want to you don't want to take chances with the economy either, uh, where you don't have to. Uh, and so, for for I, I definitely encourage uh, providing feedback to emergency management because they they do listen. They take that very seriously. We got off on a tangent there, but. Uh, <laughs> This guy would be very helpful <laughs> for everything except uh, those, those heavy storms, I suppose. But although there is a uh, rainy, day. rainy day activities yeah. in yeah. there, so yeah. that, that would be what we read from during that. Cool. Any other questions? All right. We'll be distributing these, uh, these guides uh, over the, the coming weeks, as I said, available to all bed tax collectors. Um, the number you get depends to an extent on the number of rooms you manage. Um, but uh, anyone who doesn't fall into that category um, can certainly access all the information online for free. Right. Thank, Thank you very much. Brian, again. Hi. Right. appreciate it. Brian Kellenberger uh, with our beach operations updates. Beach maintenance, uh, March garbage up slightly, April garbage down slightly. Uh, once again, the spring break uh, contributed to that uh, data. Our leave no trace for March was up considerably. I went back and looked and uh, we actually started earlier this year. We, we cut off our leave no trace program 
during the winter months when our guys really aren't getting anything off the beach. This year we started it a little bit earlier than we did last year, and that's the reason why you have a difference there. Uh, and then the April Leave No Trace, uh, about the same. Once again, uh, our uh, Leave No Trace program is successful in a bad way as we're getting a lot of product off the beach. So we're going to try to uh, ramp up our Beach Ambassador program with uh, getting that message out to people. Uh, and um, Dave and Communications can help us get it out to our bed tax collectors. Uh, hopefully we can cut that down. Uh, beach Opera Multi-Use Path Renovations, uh, the uh, Phase 2 of the, the path between 283 and Western Lake. We're still looking for the easement from the uh, state park system there for our uh, drainage and grading areas when you put in, and Public Works is spearheading that for us. The uh, 283-83, I hope everybody's had a chance to look at that. We uh, achieved substantial completion on May 25th. Still doing a little bit of work out there. Should be cleaned up, uh, final complete by the middle of this, this month. And uh, we'll be looking to have some sort of ribbon cutting uh, sometime near the end of the month. But it uh, turned out nice. The project uh, was completed on schedule and uh, within the budget. And so uh, hopefully we can continue on. Our projects moving forward will be combined with Public Works Street uh renovation projects and that'll be moving from 395 east towards eastern lake uh, the next phase will go from 395 to uh, campbell street and that will be a like say combined project with public works redoing that section 30a storm water and then uh redoing the multi-use path and i believe adding some sidewalks on the opposite side uh, the wooden bridge repairs replaced. That was a separate project that we're also doing in conjunction with when we replace that section of path. So uh, as you look at our new project between 283 and 83, you'll see uh, new bridges across um, alligator, uh, little redfish, and then the approaches to big redfish. Uh, existing beach access renovations. This is a project we started back in 2016 for what I call the facelift to our uh, beach access boardwalks. So it's new deck boards, new handrails, uh, and then structure as required. We are uh, fairly close on the design and permitting. It's taken a lot longer than we had hoped for, but uh, FDEP kind of works at their own schedule. A uh, good thing is we're getting these in, and as we're getting them in, we're uh, getting them set up for a bid, and then we'll build these in the what little off-season we have so as to not impact the communities uh, that they're in. Uh, we budgeted some in FY16 and FY17, and we also appropriated the money you know, for the construction, and that's sitting in our reserve account. Our new beach access construction, uh, due now on RBA, we're taking the 90% documents to the BCC, uh, at the next meeting for approval, at the same time we'll ask to do the construction RFP. Uh, take about two months for that procurement process and we'll start construction uh, thereafter. This one will be open uh, in time for next spring break. Mm -hmm. Miramar Beach Region Beach Access, we had the conceptual design approved by the BCC at the last meeting and the engineer is now working on design development. It'll probably be a six to eight month process for uh, uh, design and permitting and uh, we want to get that under construction as well. Uh, Seagrove Beach RBA, we had our public workshop uh, recently. Uh, the engineer is now taking that input and uh, finalizing a conceptual plan that we'll bring before the BCC once it's ready. I expect at the uh, second meeting in uh, June, and uh, then we'll start on design development of that project. Uh, beach Code Enforcement, uh, March Contacts, 1,066, April 790. Once again, spring break tapered off during April, so we didn't have as much uh, activity. Uh, the uh, main items we uh, enforce on the beach, this is the data for that. As you can see, not a whole lot of glass. Uh, dog, co dog Contacts, uh, we had a slight dip in uh, compliance in uh, March. Uh, not sure what caused that. My guess would be we have a lot of visitors uh, that don't know, and uh, so we encountered them. April, uh, a little bit better than half compliance rate, so uh, dogs continue to, you know, uh, not be a problem, but not everybody is paying attention to the dog rules. Uh, leave no trace, as you can see, very few contacts with vendor leave no trace. Uh, and then basic vendor contacts, pretty short too. Vendors are uh, doing a good job at staying within the rules. Still have a few that uh, uh, aren't, but 
And then our updates, uh, all of our signage is in place uh, for the most uh, recent code revision. Uh, the FY 2018 beach vendor permitting, we have 119 permitted vendors, 351 permits. A lot of those have multiple permits. Of those 351, there's 232 specific place and 119 delivery. Uh, 2018 special event permits we've issued so far is 340. And uh, then we have two beach code enforcement officers and myself going, in, going to the FACE conference at the end of this month. So that's where we go and learn about all new things about uh, code enforcement in Florida. How did the new beach code with the six by six tents come up with the Well, we changed that code to a 10 by 10 now. 10 by 10. And we have uh, recently installed the signage, actually it's going out right now, for the uh, one third area. We're doing that on our regional beach accesses to uh, see how it works. You know, we're in a little bit of a limbo with the sign ordinance right now. Uh, and so uh, we've come up with a mechanism that it also offers uh, some environmental uh, messaging, and that type of sign is exempt. Now, we expect a little bit of pushback on that, but trying to figure out a way to manage that signage uh, on the beach uh, and, and do it in a, in a way that we will have in the future as our new signage rules. Thank you. Any comments or questions about beach operations? Oh, one other last thing. Our, uh, TDC office renovation is underway. Uh, we've got the walls framed, floor framed, and uh, the contractor is working hard on hopefully in about a month and a half, we'll have a completed building and the much needed space for all of our personnel we have. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Great job. Mr. Tusa. I'm back. So, uh, just wanted to chat about a few things. Don't have anything formal. Um, first off, just wanted to um, just you shall know, have the uh, annual report at your uh, place settings there. Um, this is just something, this is the second year that we've done this now where we um, feel it's really important that we get the message out on what the TDC is doing for Walton County. Um, so this is a um, really nice piece. Our staff did this, um, you know, our graphic designer and uh, David and his team um, put this together and they did a tremendous job so I want to thank them for the job they did but I've gotten some really great feedback already in the community uh, this was sent out about the uh, second or third week of May so you probably received them at your homes um, so um, again this is just a really great piece for us to get our message out and educate folks the residents of Walton County on the benefits of the TDC because you know we, we all know that you know we get beat up sometimes and uh, oh what does the TDC do for us and why, why do they do this and why do they do that well this piece gives us an opportunity to really tell people what we do and why we do it so anyway so I just thought I'd take a moment just to kind of share that with it you. It had a great positive spin to it and anybody yeah. that's a um, citizen of Walton County it really laid the facts out the way they are yeah. and I, I think it was a great job. Well thank you. Thank you. So anyway just, just wanted to highlight that a little bit. Um, a couple of little things. Uh, Visit Florida is having a regional uh, meeting here on June 14th at 1130 at the Embassy Suites over in Miramar Beach. So uh, I can forward you guys an email. So if any of y'all would like to go, you can certainly sign up for that. Um, I think it's always great to participate with Visit Florida. Um, I'll be going along with other staff members from uh, the TDC. And we welcome your participation as well from a TDC uh, council representative for or for your own uh, organization. So. Uh, like I said, I'll be sending out an email uh, to you guys uh, later today or tomorrow with that. Um, quick kind of update and question for the council. Uh, at the last meeting, we kind of made reference to beginning some strategic planning in the fall. And so um, in moving forward with that plan, wanted to get some feedback from you guys on um, what might be a good time. I was thinking maybe the second week of September that we can maybe look to see about having a meeting. So I just wanted to kind of see uh, what your thoughts and feelings were on that. Um, we're trying to get this done um, this budget year. We have money in the budget to do that this year. We may not be finished, but that's fine. We don't necessarily need to be finished with it, but we at least need to be started in the process. Um, also, want to make sure that we do it uh, in this calendar year, um, just because a lot of folks can be rotating off of this board um, in December. And so, I think it's really important that we have some great veterans on this council and so we really need your input and feedback on 
um, how we want to move this organization forward versus having somebody who's perhaps on the council for a month or two. I mean, we really need your insight. So anyway, so I was thinking, like I said, about the second week of September. So um, that's kind of what we're going to move towards unless there's any objections from the council. Looks good. Wanted to get us out of uh, peak season, mm -hmm. <laughs> Labor Day. Well, yeah, when you and I talked, you yeah. said August or September. Well, I was thinking, I was thinking I maybe, September maybe late not, August, so. but um, <laughs> certainly after Labor Day is, I think, better for everybody as a whole. Yeah. Um, a couple other quick updates. Uh, we had a really great tourism week this year. Um, now that we're completely staffed up and have been for some time now, we really rolled out all the stops on tourism week this year. And so we had several events. Uh, we sponsored the Chamber Luncheon that week. Uh, we had some educational opportunities that week where we invited our partners to come and learn about public relations, come learn about digital and social marketing, uh, some hospitality training, and uh, we had some great participation from our, our partners. Uh, over 60 uh, people came out and listened to uh, these educational sessions, so uh, I thought that was really um, well received. Uh, we've gotten some good feedback from our partners, and uh, it's really important that we all try to stay on the cutting edge of uh, new trends. Uh, whether it's marketing, public relations, hospitality training. And so uh, we're going to be looking to offer these again in the future uh, since they were so well received. So um, we'll certainly alert you to those as uh, we move forward with that. Um, another event that we had was uh, the Perfect Awards. Uh, we had an event at uh, Great and Beer and um, really nice turnout uh, celebrating all these uh, award recipients. And so um, I think that was very well received as well as the um, educational training. So uh, we also had in the visitor center, uh, we were uh, partnered with um, some of our local restaurants and kind of uh, sweet uh, shops, if you will, uh, to give out uh, food uh, at the visitor center. And uh, we also gave out uh, t-shirts and just little koozies, some you know um, more or less uh, inexpensive uh, items to give to our visitors. And uh, the reception for that was, was very well received. Uh, so, um, you know, Tourism Week was really successful. Um, next year, we're looking to do some more things uh, for Tourism Week, um, actually considering moving the annual meeting to Tourism Week. A um, couple of issues. Uh, one is I think it would just be really a way for us to highlight um, that annual meeting being a part of Tourism Week. Also, October is getting very busy for our partners. It's almost becoming spring break light, so I think that might help them if we move that. And it also will be a way for us to really get our data together and look at that from a calendar year versus uh, fiscal year. Uh, I think when we present information, people kind of tend to get a little confused when we say we had this many people or this much economic impact. Um, so we're kind of looking at all that right now. So I'll keep you apprised on how we move forward with that. But just some initial thoughts on how we might make Tourism Week better for next year. Uh, Jay? Yes. Um, during Tourism Week, can we make sure that we find a, a venue um, that the air conditioning works and the yellow flies can't get in. We, we, we definitely will look for that. A um, couple of things. Uh, it, it was, that was a rough night. Yeah. Well, uh, one, one thing we're looking to do with the perfect awards is uh, actually move that out of Tourism Week and move that in January uh, and actually do a few other things in January. Um, if we move the annual meeting to uh, May, um, we would do the perfect awards perhaps in January. We'd also announce the Artist of the Year and would also unveil our new visitor guide. So that way that can be kind of one standalone event for those. And then we will move the annual meeting to May during Tourism Week. And in Tourism Week, then we can highlight the uh, Van S. Butler Award uh, recipient. But we can also, uh, I'd like to bring uh, forward a few other awards uh, for our industry. I want to not only um, award someone who is kind of at the top of their game, I want to award somebody who is maybe really public facing, um, you know, maybe it's a housekeeper, uh, maybe it's a rising star award. So, so we're looking at some different categories that we want to introduce and really make it where they're very meaningful to the general workforce of the Walton County hospitality industry. So we're looking at that, probably introduce another two or three categories of awards where we can really showcase our talent here. So that's kind of just what we have in thought for next year. And I'll talk about that a little bit more as we move. I mean, obviously we still have Plenty, plenty of time until next tourism week, but just kind of some of the things that we're thinking about. Um, and let's see if there's anything else on my list. I think that is it. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any questions for me from anyone? No, I'd, I'd like to thank you very much for 
given the current customary use uh, situation, thank you for the foresight and pushing through and getting the county and everyone, thank everybody for making it happen, but for purchasing the new regional beach access properties and pushing those forward. Thank you. And, um, you know, as Brian's been reporting over the past year, I mean, we're making some good headway. We've gotten a little delayed with DEP along the process, but all in all, we're in good shape. And I'm really excited. I mean, we'll have those beach accesses online next year. Um, and that's going to be really exciting to bring three new beach accesses online to Walton County. I mean, we're going from 8 to 11. So that's pretty significant. Are there any others that you're looking at, or is that process coming? There, there are, but I'm not at liberty to talk about that right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna have I to thought say, we shared everything. Looking. Yeah. <laughs> I'd you know, we can keep looking because that's obviously going to impact tourism yeah. dramatically. I, I have a couple of options that I'm looking at, and hopefully, if I can get through some things that I'm discussing with some owners, I can bring those to the board um, in short order. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks again, Jerry. Mm -hmm. Any council members have any comments? No. Uh, public comments, Mr. McDowell. Thank you for your patience this morning, sir. Yes, sir. <coughs> how are you this morning? I'm well. How are you? Good. Thank you. That this is uh, in the public comment section and not on the agenda is a reflection of my unfamiliarity with the process rather than the quality of the program. And I respectfully request that you recognize that. Uh, my name is Paul McDowell. My wife, Margaret, and I have lived in South Walton for 10 years and in the area for 32 years. We own Arbor Wealth Management here in South Walton in Miramar Beach. I've got a project going to bring college baseball to South Walton and to our area in the summer, and we are tantalizingly close to recognizing that dream. With your help, we can do that. There are currently about 30 summer college baseball leagues in America. There are two in Florida, one in the Miami area and one in Central Florida, but none here in North Florida. We feel like we're missing a great opportunity our league would be modeled after the Cape Cod League. It's legendary, it's 100 years old. 300,000 tourists attended baseball games in the Cape Cod League last year. Uh, if we draw one third uh, of that to our league, that's 100,000 visitors. If one half of those stay with us in South Walton in our hotels, condos, and residences, um, that's 50,000 extra visitors if they each spend $1,000. That's $50 million uh, revenue generated, uh, and that's a good return on investment. I think you'd agree. The popularity of college baseball in these summer leagues is exploding in our country. A few hundred yards from here at South Walton High School, one year from today, we could be watching a pitcher from Florida State attempting to strike out a hitter from the national defending champion, Florida Gators. We could have a shortstop from Alabama trying to throw out a base runner from Auburn, an outfielder from LSU cutting a runner down to play from Ole Miss. Hopefully, I'm a Tigers, so go Tigers. Uh, the marketing possibilities are endless. In the marriage of summer college baseball with property management firms, hotels, and condos, staycation packages with lawn chairs and game tickets are a natural. Uh, at every game that we broadcast on YouTube and on our website, and we will have that capability. We will have the technology to broadcast live and tape 30-second commercials for Visit South Walton. Um, we are partnering with individual schools, something the Cape Cod League does not do, and uh, suggesting that our individual partnering schools, which sometimes provide support services like field access, these schools receive all of the revenue from uh, gate and concessions. This can mean $50,000 each annually to three schools that could potentially partner with us. The players become a part of the fabric of South Walton. They live and work part-time in the community. They put on weekly instructional clinics. It can provide a sense of identity and pride for our local residents and opportunity for volunteerism. A typical minor league team like the Wahoos costs 12 to $15 million and three to four times that to build a stadium. We can bring major college baseball to South Walton for a tiny fraction of that cost, 50000 per team initially and 40000 per team annually each year thereafter. 
fund uniforms, equipment, pay umpire contracts, and coaching stipends. Um, one team would play at South Walton High School and two teams would alternate home dates in the new facility at Peach Creek. Commissioner Anderson has been incredibly gracious in supporting the idea of making one of those fields playable for us. With three teams in South Walton, we could offer college baseball, major college baseball, virtually every night of the summer in South Walton. All our mascots will be named after species of fish in the Gulf of Mexico, the South Walton Stingrays, the Great Beach Bluefish, the 30A Redfish. Um, actual funding for equipment and such is not needed until February. What we would respectfully request is a commitment from this August body that you, you can tell us how many teams it, you would fund it if in, indeed you wish to fund them. Uh, that would allow Coach Pearson, myself, the recently retired head coach at Troy, who's uh, serving as our college baseball consultant, to attract the finest college baseball players in the country this summer as we start to recruit them. Public servants face enormous pressure and a lot of criticism, as I, I know you know. One thing is for certain, if you make this happen in South Walton, and we hope you do, you will forever be known as a part of a group that brought major college baseball to South Walton for decades to come. That's a decent, fine, and honorable legacy, and we humbly implore you to do so. Thank you so much. Thanks, Paul. Uh, Paul? Yes, sir. Uh, quick question. What is the timeline that, that this is uh, occurring every year? Oh, it's the season. I see 44 yeah. games. The, we play in June and July. June and July. Two months? Correct. That's when the, the student athletes are out of school. They finish the regionals. Uh, my Tigers finished the regionals in Oregon <laughs> this past weekend. Some teams are still playing. But they would be traveling this weekend to start the season this week. And the All-Star game would be held in late July the playoffs at the last of July and the champion crown the first couple of days of August. So Paul, is a, I'm a huge baseball fan. I grew up in St. Louis, uh, a Cardinal fan. So I, I, I have several questions that would be kind of thing that I would, my gut would support. Uh, but I'd love to see more about some of the numbers, the hard numbers, you know, the returns that you're, you're talking about. If, if you could see more of that, I would welcome that. And then also, um, so we're talking about a two-month season hottest time of the year, does it coincide with the off season from these colleges and would, would you, uh, what, what's your expectations for getting good talent and support from, you know, to create the, the players, bring the players in for these teams? Sure, uh, we plan, first of all, go Cardinals, great franchise. Mm -hmm. uh, we plan to play at night. Uh, our tourists go to the beach during the day and they, they dine in our find seafood restaurants, and then many times they go back to their accommodations. This is a chance for them to experience family-centric entertainment in our community here. Um, it'll be a little cooler at night, still warm here, but we plan to play at night. June and July are the only time the summer league, college summer leagues are held because the athletes are in school uh, mid-August through mid-May, or they're playing in their fall program or spring baseball uh, at our various universities. Um, well, I'm sorry, what was your other question? Yeah, so like right now, I guess the, the, the build up to the College World Series is taking place and here we are in June, so there's a lot of the best teams are, are tied up doing that. So um, where would you be drawing your, your talent from? Um, it, hopefully in a moment you'd allow Coach Pierce to speak briefly to that issue. Um, he played and coached at Alabama and was the coach at Troy for 13 years and Chipola and Alabama Huntsville started the program there. I just got back from Hoover from the SEC tournament, talked to eight SEC coaches there. Every one of them said they would send us players. In LSU's case, they can send them this weekend because they're out. Uh, in Ole Miss's case, I hope there are no Rebels here, they can send because they got eliminated by Tennessee Tech last night. But uh, some of the teams would continue to play and would be eliminated in the Super Regionals, and then they would be, the players would be a week later getting here. Uh, the Cape Cod League deals with this. Players get drafted, and then they may be in a negotiation process and leave after they sign with their Major League team during the course of the season. Each team would have 24 players. Uh, all 24, to really answer your question, will not be here at June 5th or June 6th, but they would be here shortly thereafter. Okay. Does that 
Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. If you could just send more data on, on the returns, I'd love I'd welcome that. I'd love to see it. Tim? It really is an admirable program, but I, I'm just wondering where 50 more thousand people would be be able to be accommodated in June or July. Great peak peak season. Yes, yeah, so that's a great question. I, I've been here in the area 32 years and have seen summer tourism and its ups and downs. I've seen the BP oil spill. I've seen the Great Recession in the dot com bubble. Um, and as Commissioner Anderson mentioned, we have weekends where uh, the Weather Channel doesn't do us any favors. Our teams will continue to play and folks will continue to attend these games. In addition to which, if I may. Uh, uh, expound on that question just a little bit. This is tremendous for the quality of life for our local residents. Our Little League players, our local residents will identify and, and, and enjoy a sense of uh, pride and identity with these teams when we go play Fort Walton, the team from Fort Walton Beach or the team from Panama City comes to play here. Uh, we might be at 94% summer occupancy right now, but um, that is not always the case. So uh, I, I think they'll find places to stay and, and places to dine and a way to attend these games. Yes, sir. Um, well, that was my question. The, the, time of your oh, the, the uh, players, is there a guarantee on the players I mean, having enough players for these teams. I mean, are you going to sign them up? They're going to make a commitment to be here for that period of time? Yes, sir. And we're considering a financial deposit on their part that they get back if they stay the entire summer. Coach Pierce and I are in conversations about that. Um, the reason that we are here asking for your action now is so that in mid-July we can be ahead of the curve in recruiting the best players from these programs. If we wait until August to get body, excuse me, meets again and a decision is made in early September, we would be quite behind the curve. A lot of colleges place their players the first week of school when they come back to college in mid-August. Another question. Um, I know for uh, Frank Brown Park over here, this time of the year, they have, I don't know, about, they bring in like three million a month just on the baseball. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a lot of players. I mean, there's teams that got regionals coming in. All Coach Pierce Bob can talk to all of that about that, about what goes on in baseball. I used to play baseball back in the day. And let me tell you, this whole area is just on fire. And then you got Coach Jimmy Martin, I mean, uh, Coach Mike Martin out of Florida State. You know, it's got some great players coming out of there. You've got a, you've got a, you've got a foundation here that you can kind of build up. And I know maybe 2007 and eight when we were looking at the sports complex to bring in some extra, you know, a different type of uh, venue for everybody to come and enjoy. And I think with all those tourists over there coming over here to watch the players, I see there's some Panama City teams too, as far as that goes. But I mean, it would be, uh, it, could, it could actually turn out to be a pretty good uh, program. Yeah, yeah. I want to just make that your comment. I have some of Gary's concerns, uh, number one and number two. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I lost my train of thought, too. Because <laughs> he stole it from me. Uh, our uh, highest ADR, yeah. our highest ADR is in the summertime, too. Yeah, my, yeah no, that, that's, that's a concern. That would be a concern. The second so, thing is, yeah. is, is the commitment that we're being asked for is is for next month and our our, our budget has already been written uh, for this fiscal year and i'll do respect to your timeline we have to operate under certain timelines and we, we can't even consider this for this year's budget because it's not budgeted and um so i like the idea i'm concerned about where we're going to put all these people up um and also we try to get the funding for shorter seasons also. And I'm not trying to squash the program. It's, right. it's very admirable. I just don't think the timing. Sure. What what is the ask? What are we that being team. asked? What are we being asked? Oh it's uh, each team can be funded for fifty thousand dollars initially and forty thousand dollars each in subsequent years. It pays for uniforms, equipment, coaching stipends, travel, umpire contracts, um, which is it, it, it's an extremely reasonable figure compared to 
the uh, a franchise in the Northwoods League in uh, Michigan, Wisconsin, is now selling for a million dollars to municipalities there. Coach Pierce was asked to coach a team in a prospect league in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, that just sold for two hundred twenty-five thousand. Um, and uh, in, in respect to your comment, Mr. Bellman, I, I respect that your budget and your processes. Um, and again, I would ask that you not hold this against the program. I've been chatting with and meeting with Mr. Anderson for a while and with Mike Kerrigan for some time, and it wasn't until Friday afternoon at 5 o'clock that I realized I needed to come before this board. I, I've been busy making a living and, and uh, marketing for our investment advisory firm, and, and my apologies in that respect. Um, we, uh, we feel like this could be something unique and special in South Walton, not just for the next year, but for decades. Um, and that uh, the, uh, the opportunity to bring, someone is gonna do this eventually. Uh, we have met with the uh, Tourist Development Council and PCB, um, spent a lot of time with Richard Sanders over there, their new $35 million ballpark that's going up just north of 98 over by Hathaway Bridge. Uh, they have built uh, several fields that will accommodate our needs and we will be playing some games there. Uh, Panama City is on the verge of a new construction process which will accommodate college high school uh, uh, dimensions. Um, so you're correct, Mr. Norris, it, it is just exploding. Uh, we've also, uh, if I may say, are very fortunate that we've got a lot of people with professional and college baseball experience who live in this area who can coach these teams and that will help us recruit players uh the college coaches want to know who's going to be working with their players so paul i mean i understand like for instance i mean i would be all ears and we want to hear more uh, it's the first i've heard of it so as a public body you know we'd be remiss not to you know or, or to move forward into any major you know financial decision like this without seeing a full-fledged business plan you know that's what that's the way, you know, as a developer, we would make decisions. We want to see pro formas. We want to understand more details. The facilities, do they have, for, you know, do they have the capacity for the seating, the crowds, the, you know, the schedule. And then, you know, there's talk in here about charging admission, <coughs> you know. So right. let, let's, let's see some data, you know, is where I'm trying to take this. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I understand. Uh, mm -hmm. One thing that's unique about the Cape League and that would be unique about our league is that it is a lawn chair league. Um, great, large amount of grandstands are not needed. Okay. South Walton, as you probably know, is about to undergo a multi-million dollar project which is gonna remodel their baseball field and enlarge it. Uh, and through the auspices of Commissioner Anderson, we potentially have the ability to play at Peach Creek with one team at home and one team on the road. Um, but uh, I, will, I will work diligently to provide that to you as rapidly as possible. It is somewhat unique in that it is a program which has no track record. So uh, there are not hard numbers to point to, but we can point to the numbers in other leagues. Sure, and you've got yeah. several assumptions and we want to understand every one of them. Absolutely. Yeah. I think the marketing piece of it probably needs to go through the marketing committee as well uh, to vet what, what we'd actually receive from a marketing standpoint. I, 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 I agree with you. Did everybody understand what uh, Jim just said? is that we take this proposal and give it to the marketing committee that's their job okay. and let them take a look at that and let paul um give that hard information to the marketing committee let them go through that process uh with paul and then make a recommendation to us and then then we got some hard facts to work with um i, I will tell you that it's going to be pretty tough um, um I, i'm just telling you this because I know what's going on here, or at least I'm supposed to know what's going on here, is that, that trying to get a commitment from us uh, next month is not going to happen. It, that, what, what he's recommending is that we that you meet with the marketing committee, which is a committee of this council, and do do that do that homework first, and then they'll come back to us and make a recommendation. So to see this happening in the next 30 days, I, I'm just going to tell you it's probably not going to happen. Understood. Uh, yeah, I'm, Understood. Just, I'm just trying to be upfront with you because I'm excited I about it. And appreciate I, I, I it, Mr. Bell. Yeah, well, I, I my don't dad, want to discourage yeah. you. My dad told me stay flexible and you won't get bent out of shape. <laughs> we, uh, we will work with your timeline and do the absolute best that we can to make this happen for South Walton. 
all of you are busy, uh, incredibly, uh, obviously talented people, and you understand there are a lot of moving parts to this. Mm -hmm. uh, but we we will work diligently to uh, to get all that done, Mr. Velma. All right, Mr. Mr. Chairman, if so I could make a motion. Then? Go ahead, Jay. just real Sorry, quick. Jay. The um, the next marketing committee meeting is on uh, July seventeenth at two o'clock. Okay. So just wanted to. Uh, we make a motion to present this to the marketing committee for the fiscal year of, or the, yeah, fiscal year of 2019. Not really appropriate to make a motion on a matter that's not on the agenda that's brought up under public comment, but certainly staff can take direction from what the board has suggested. And Mr. Tusa and I had already spoken once the presentation began that this would be appropriate to go to the marketing committee and then also potentially even to the events committee. There may be a number of different ways to look at this item, but marketing would be the best place to start. So staff can certainly direct them there without the B, without the TDC having to make an actual motion at this time. All right. So you, you, just to clarify, what you're saying is that the council does not need to make a motion on this, but we make a suggestion since it's under public comment to give it back to Jay and his teams and let the appropriate committees take a look at that and make sure that Mr. McDowell is included in, in the dates and times and places for those committees to meet. Do I understand that? Correctly? Absolutely correct. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McDowell. Appreciate Thank your you. time this Thank morning. You, Thank you. I need a motion. I think we're done. So I need a motion to adjourn. So move. move. Second. So Lee, Lee, Lee Moore in the back wants to make a comment. Yeah, we'll she was waving her hand. Oh, I apologize. Didn't see your hand waving back there. I'll be quick. Thank you, Good Council. Morning. Good morning. Lee Moore. And I'm representing, gosh, I don't know how many organizations at this point. Um, but I'm also speaking for myself um, and representing Howard Group and, and the nonprofits that I work with, South Walton Community Council, Scenic Corridor Foundation. I'm not on the board, but I've begun working with Trees on the Coast. Um, I, I just want to say that um, that I really am excited about the things that are happening in this area. And a lot of that is coming out of the TDC. Um, there is a lot of angst out there in the community, as you know, about the growth that we're experiencing, both in, you know, we're experiencing growth in tourism, also in, um, in the permanent population here in the residential um, constituency. And things are changing, but I will say that the work that I'm seeing done on the pathway replacement and beach access and, um, and a lot of other things, the parking that's being formalized down in the, in the eastern end or western end of 30A, um, it's all being done really, really well. And I want to give kudos to the staff of the TDC under Jay's leadership, you all as a council, the Board of County Commissioners that has to approve everything that, that comes through here. Um, I, you know, it is, it's scary to me as a resident here to see the growth and the changes, but it's coming, it's not going to stop, and the growth and development is not going to stop, and it just is really important to do it right and to do it well. And I am seeing more of that. Everything's not perfect. You're never going to get everything right, right? I mean, it's impossible. Um, we're just a bunch of humans trying to work together on things. But, but I do... Um, I do feel really good about it. And another thing I feel good about is in my work, um, I am seeing more and more interest and cooperation from local government and local government entities like the TDC um, and Jay um, in, in working with us nonprofits that want to get good things done here. And it's, it's, um, it's encouraging. And, you know, we talk about, I get up and talk about pathways and landscaping and all that, and they're not always the highest things on the priority list. But I've, I've said before, if you don't prioritize those things, they'll never get up to the top, right? Because they're always going to be public safety and, and um, you know, storm water and all these things that are really, really critical. But those things are important too. And, and they really make the difference. So I'll finish by saying that, um, I just want to encourage you. I think this has been happening, and I just want to encourage you all and the next council and the next council and the BCCs um, here and now and to come to always consider making it a great place to live. I think if we, that's what's been the secret of our success. Not that it's a secret. Other places do it really well, too. But it's been the key to our success because if you make it a great place to visit, but it's not really a great place to live, 
in my opinion, that is not sustainable in the long term to maintain the kind of demographics that we have and the kind of quality location that we have and the quality of visitor and resident. And so over time, I think that will decline. If you make it a great place to live, it will, a place like ours with the natural resources and beauty and, and incredibly amazing things to do um, just because it's here, um, not because of anything that we do, it will succeed as a tourist destination if you continue to make sure it remains a great place to live. And so we talk about the locals and they gripe and complain and get upset about things. And I know vendors and, and developers and others get very frustrated with the local residents here. But while that can be frustrating, it's also really, really important to listen to that. Because even though they're trying to protect what they have here, which is really, really important, if we do the right things for the locals, then the tourism will follow and it will be maintained. And so, um, except for those who just don't want anybody else here, that's a totally different, right? They're, that's the fringe um, on, the, on the outskirts. But in general, most people are just looking for the right things to happen. And so I just want to say, again, kudos and keep it up. And I hope that this balance will continue to be maintained in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. You. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Good man. Good job. Good timing. Nice job with this book, isn't it? Yeah, I like it. Look at that, huh? Take that home. Take that home. I'm a share. It's going to be everywhere. That's right. That's what happens to these books anyway. They kind of sit on the bookshelf. Tony, good to see you. Tony, good to see you again. Yeah, I'm doing good. Baseball. I'm all in for baseball. Thank you.